Hey guys, it's Kate, and in this video, I will share with you some pastel pencil secrets. So for the first secret that actually is not a secret is to have artist grade materials. That goes both for pencils and for the paper. What I would suggest for pencils is Carbothellos, Derwent's, or Caran d'Ache pencils, if you can allow yourselves to get a set of Caran d'Ache, they are amazing. But also Kohinoor's and Conte pencils are quite good as well. I do not like Faber-Castell pencils. I know that a lot of people use them, but for me they are a bit just too hard, but I suggest that if you manage, go to an art supply store and pick up different pencils of different brands and just try them out. The next thing is the paper. For pastel pencils, you will need a sanded surface. So basically, it's a paper that has a lot of tooth that is going to accept many, many layers on your painting. I would suggest Clairefontaine Pastel Mat. That's what I get here in UK. You can also get papers like UART in the United States or Canson Mitant's Touch. That is also a sanded paper. There are other papers like Ingress and for example, Canson Mitants, which is also considered a pastel paper. But these papers, they have the tooth that, first of all, has this texture that you will see uh, showing through your drawing. And second of all, you will not be able to layer as well as you would with the sanded paper. So if you're just starting out with the pencils, I suggest you use the pastel mat. There's also another paper called Velour. It's a paper that has this kind of uh, texture of fabric. It's very soft to the touch, like quite fuzzy, and it accepts very well softer pastels. So pencils, they go as harder pastels. And if you're working on velour, your pencil marks will not be as pigmented and as rich in color as you could get them to be on pastel mat. So my advice is Carbothellos, Derwent's, or Caran d'Ache, and pastel mat paper. Secret number two. If we're talking about different papers, if you already have pastel paper that is Ingress or Mitance and you would like to also try your hand at those, then do not throw them out. Try and the more you practice, the better you will get. But speaking about different papers, I found out that different blending tools work best on different papers. So if you work on pastel mat, then rubbing the pigment around with your fingers or with a paper stump works the best. I've tried the color shapers, those are the rubbery thingies um, that you use uh, to push the pigment around and on pastel mat it doesn't work very well and I don't like the uh, feeling of the rubber rubbing against the surface of the paper. So for pastel mat I would suggest getting paper stumps because they're very useful, especially to getting those tricky uh, thin areas that you would like to blend out. And then I would suggest to use a color shaper with mitants and ingress paper. Those work better with a color shaper because if you use a paper stump on these kinds of papers, it's going to lift out a lot of pigment. The same goes for your fingers. So if you prefer to work on ingress or mitants, then by all means get yourself a color shaper and see how you like it. They come in different shapes and sizes, so you can also get them. I have a couple of Chinese ones that took a month to get here, but they are very good. They are not worse than any of the ones that I bought in art supply stores that cost a lot more. So your pencil has two ways of using it. First one is using a tip and that you will be using for very detailed strokes and marks. And then you can use your pencil on the side and the blunter pencil just to cover larger areas. Here you can also use hard pastel sticks or pan pastel. So these are two things, hard pastel sticks, you can buy them, uh, those are the Conte crayons or also Kohinoor's, they produce the hard pastels. There's Rembrandt's that are semi-hard pastels, but those will probably clog the tooth of your paper too much. So if you would like to cover a large area and then build up more layers on it, I would suggest hard pastels or just using your pencils. Although pencils are more expensive than hard pastels. In every painting and every drawing that you do, layering is the most important thing. And pastels and pastel pencils, they are quite an opaque medium. But nonetheless, you can still glaze with them. What I mean by glazing is layering one color on top of the other in a thin layer that you can still see the layer underneath. So I use this technique when I draw fur, for example, and when I'm drawing 
I did a video on black fur recently and when I'm drawing, for example, those shadow pockets in the fur, in between the different strands of fur, I glaze over my black with a dark blue or a dark purple or a dark green, depending on the surroundings that the animal is in. If you would use only the black color and not overlay any other color over top of it, um, it might look a bit flat. The next secret goes for any medium. When you're picking out the colors for your painting, most importantly, start by going through these three steps. The first one is the value. So when you're looking at a particular area in your painting, decide which value it is. It means how light or how dark the particular area of the image is. So this is going to help you build a recognizable image because the color doesn't matter as much as the value does. So choose pencils from the point of view of value first, then go to the temperature aspect of it. So how warm or how cool the color looks and only then already decide on the color. So this is going to help you improve um, your images, improve your paintings and drawings in all mediums. So value, temperature, color. The next secret is use different colors in your drawing or painting. So what I mean by different colors is that even if your subject is entirely black or entirely white, take a closer look at the fur or if you're doing still lives at the objects that you have in your still life. It's never going to have only one color in it. So even the whitest objects will have purples, lavenders, pinks, beige colors, um, depending on where it is. So basically depending on your surroundings, the fur or the texture of the object that you're drawing is always going to reflect those colors, which means that you can create a more realistic painting by using these colors and giving it shape with these colors. So always take a look at your reference material, be it a photo or a still life or a landscape that you're painting and just pay close attention to all the colors that you see. So I do not mean to use too many colors at the same time, don't understand me wrong, but I mean that you need to use many colors to represent a single kind of shade of the object. If you try to put highlights, white highlights with a white pastel pencil, sometimes you may notice, especially on darker areas, that your white is not bright white. And sometimes you really do need that bright white to pop so what to do in this situation? Well, it's very easy. You take a very soft pastel stick. So for example, you can buy a Schmincke Unison or Sennelier pastel sticks that are white and add that highlight with that pastel stick. So this is going to give a pop to your image and the highlight is going to be really highlighted. But pay attention, sometimes highlights are not entirely white and they might have a color to them. So Always study your reference photo good. So the next secret is blacks. The same goes for blacks. The blackest blacks, the darkest blacks that you can get is always with a soft pastel. So again, as I said, Unison, Sennelier, Schmincke, all the softest brands, they will give you the blackest and darkest blacks in your image. So if you need something to be very, very dark, I would suggest instead of a pencil, you use a dark pastel. So usually when you work on a sanded surface, it's very easy to layer some more pastel pencils over the top of the area that you need fixing. And that is quite enough to cover the previous um, colors or shapes, whatever is underneath that you need to change. And you don't need to erase anything. I never use erasers, almost never. And when I do use erasers, I tend to use a putty eraser or just some white bread, very uh, fresh white bread that I just kind of clump together to create a homemade putty eraser. But there is another way how you can remove some pastel layers and add new layers on top, especially if you have clogged the tooth of the paper, if you need to take some of the layers off just to be able to fix the image that you're working on. So what do you do then? You take a paintbrush, any paintbrush, the stiffer actually the better, and you just rub with your paintbrush over the area that you need to fix. This is going to take away the pastel and do not 
think that it's going to take completely all the color out of the paper. There's still going to be pastel that's going to go inside the teeth of the paper. But when you brush the pastels off, you will be able to layer more layers over the top. And as pastels are quite opaque, you can always fix that area with multiple layers on top of it. What I mean by underpainting is basically you can use different mediums the same pastel pencils or soft pastels or hard pastels or watercolors or acrylics, you name it. Anything that you have at home that you would like to try, you can always use as an underpainting. Be careful, for example, with oils if you would like to create an oil underpainting. I've never done it myself, but be careful not to clog the tooth of the paper. The same goes for acrylics. Just make sure that you are diluting it quite enough to create your underpainting. And always go for the big shapes. Don't go for the detail until you're working with your pencils over the top. So how do you create an underpainting with pastels and pastel pencils? Very easy. If you take plain water, you can brush the water with the paintbrush over your pencils or over the area that you covered with your pencils or with your pastels and that's going to kind of um, loosen up the pigment and it's going to cover the areas that you brush over. You can also use alcohol or turpenoid and each of them have their different drying times and another thing that you should know if you are going to create a wet underpainting is that your paper must be um, suitable for this. You can use uh, Clairefontaine pastel mat, that is a suitable surface for wet underpainting. But uh, as far as I know, Sennelier pastel card is also a sanded paper, but it does not accept any wet media on it. So be careful, study your paper before you start any underpaintings and just experiment and you will be surprised at the things that you come up with. What I mean by mid-tone paper is any color actually, um, as long as it's not black and very dark or not completely white. So this is going to help you immediately see the values that you're putting on the paper. So the mid-tone is going to allow you to see when you're putting lighter values and how light your lights are and how dark you need your darks to be. So this is going to improve your paintings if you've never tried, or drawings if you've never tried working on a mid-tone surface. I've used different sharpeners and that was not very successful. So I would suggest that if you do not want to buy a good expensive sharpener, expensive, I mean about 15 pounds, the one that I paid, um, it's the money that I paid for my sharpener. And if you would like to sharpen your pencils by hand, that's going to be quite uh, time consuming and you will never get a tip as fine as with the crank hilt sharp sharpener, but you can sharpen your pencils with your craft knife and a sanded block. The sharpener that I am using is a swordfish sharpener and it is amazing. It just, um, takes all the pastel pencils and it almost never breaks them. Depending on the mediums that you used to work with before maybe, or if you're completely new to pastels, sometimes you can apply too much pressure on the pencil when you're working with it. So there are two things that can happen. First of all, you can snap the lead. So if you're, you have a very sharp pencil and you press too hard, the lead is just going to break. Second thing is that you will probably clog the paper too soon, so the tooth of the paper is going to be too full to accept other layers of pencil. So depending on the paper that you're working with, if it is a kind of ingress paper and mitons paper, then you can flatten the surface of the paper in a way that it becomes shiny and it does not accept any more layers at all. So even if you scrub the pastel off, it's going to accept one layer to the most. So if you're working on a sanded paper, again, as I've said, you can clog the tooth too much and just, yeah, it's not a good idea to start with a very heavy pressure. So I always start with a light hand and I just layer and layer and layer and that kind of adds the dimension and depth to my drawings and paintings. In pastel, you have this opportunity to correct your mistakes and to apply your lights on top of your darks. It's very similar to painting with oil and 
I really like this about pastels because it just makes sense that all the highlights, be it fur, um, on objects, anything, they're just kind of on top where the sunlight or any artificial light is hitting the object and especially with the fur. It's a lot easier to create a fur texture when you're working from dark to light. So I really don't like particularly the negative drawing, which means that you have to go around the areas that you need to leave lighter than um, the value that you're applying uh, at that particular moment. So as to be able to maintain these areas lighter and to add light colors on top of them. So um, I know that there are other artists that are using the opposite approach to pastels. They usually work on papers that are not sanded, that do not accept as many layers and um, as Ingress paper. And they work from light to dark, which means that they add their light layers first, and then they work around those light uh, parts, be it highlights or just the lighter parts of the object or the subject that they're painting. So with pastel pencils and sanded paper, you have the advantage of working from dark to light, and it's really cool. Make sure that your drawing is really good before you start applying any color to it. So if you're tracing, make sure that you're tracing it good. Or if you're drawing freehand, make sure that the proportions are correct. Because no matter how many layers of pastel you put on top over your drawing or how good you are at shading and seeing colors, if you've got the drawing wrong, it's just not going to look good. So there's no way of saving a drawing if your proportions were wrong. What I do, how, how do I transfer my images onto the pastel paper if I am not drawing it um, by hand? So when I draw by hand, I use charcoal. Charcoal is very easy to erase and is very easy to correct. Make sure that you are transferring your image using pastel. I use a printed out image of, let's say a dog that I'm going to be drawing and I cover the backside of the image with my black pastel. It's a soft pastel, it covers any paper very easily. And then I put it um, over the top of my pastel paper, um, depending on the medium that I'm going to be working on, velour if it's soft pastels or pastel matte if it's pastel pencils. And I just trace over the top and this is going to act in the same way that tracing paper does. So, but instead of graphite, it's going to deposit the black pastel that I covered the other side of the image with onto my pastel paper. I hope this makes sense. So um, this way you avoid adding graphite to your drawing because pastel and graphite, they just don't go very good together. There are different opinions online and in different artist groups about fixative and everyone is using what they are most comfortable with. But what I would say about fixative is that I do not like it for one reason, because it changes the colors of your drawing. It darkens your colors. Even if you're applying multiple coats of fixative over the top of your drawing or painting, it still does not mean that the drawing or painting is not going to get smudged. So. I do not like fixatives. I have a couple of different fixatives at home, but I stopped using them all together because sometimes they just will spurt out these little droplets um, and they will deposit on the pastel paper and create this kind of dotty texture. And I really don't like it. And what I do is I have my paintings framed behind glass. This is going to protect them from being touched. And as well, you put a passport too. Um, it's basically a kind of paper frame, um, a card frame, I would say, around your painting. And this is going to ensure that it kind of detaches the painting or the drawing from the glass surface. So it's very important that the glass does not touch the drawing when you are framing it. So when I'm working, I do not like working at an easel, um, especially when I'm working with pencils. So I'm working on a flat surface on the table and I put a paper under my hand when I'm holding my hand on a certain area of my drawing and there are two reasons for it. The first one is smudging the drawing that you've done so far. So if you are putting your hand over the areas that have already pastel on it, you can easily smudge the drawing by moving your hand even slightly. 
The next reason is that your hand, it still has um, natural oils on it and you can smudge the oils on the paper and it's best to avoid that. So I suggest that every time that you are working on your drawing or painting, you always put a clean sheet of paper underneath. So that way you can slide your hand over the sheet of paper and avoid the smudging and depositing any kind of oils or any kind of anything else. Also, other pastel. I have usually my hand covered with darker pastel. I don't know why, but <laughs> so you're avoiding of smudging darker pastel as well onto the paper. And then the last secret that I wanted to share with you is do not drop your pencils. So the worst thing that can happen to your pencils is them being dropped. I am very careful with my pencils and I have them stored in a pencil case that is quite soft and it protects the pencils from being damaged. But if you drop your pencils, you're risking to crack the lead on the inside of the pencil. So if with colored pencils, for example, Prismacolors, I baked them in the microwave for a bit and the wax inside the pencils, it kind of slightly melted and welded the pencil back together again, even after I dropped it and it did not crack when I was sharpening it. Then with pastel pencils, you will not be able to do the same thing. So if you've broken the lead inside of the pencil, it's very probable that when you are sharpening the pencil, it's just going to crumble. So Avoid at all costs dropping your pencils. Make sure that they are on a surface that they are not going to roll off and because the pencils themselves are quite expensive. So this is the end of my secrets video. I hope you found many things that are useful to you. And if you have any questions, I will be very happy to answer them in the comments section below this video. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video as well. I have different tutorials and some tips and tricks videos on my YouTube channel and as well some real-time tutorial videos with voiceover on my Patreon. So I will be seeing you in my next video. Bye!